Our music changes and evolves over time. Old styles give way to new ones, blues into rock and roll, rock into punk. But these musical revolutions are not unique to us. Whales go through them too. Humpback whales sing eerie, haunting songs. They've been compiled into albums, they fill the halls of spas, and they've been satirised in Pixar's Finding Nemo. It's only the males who sing, and at any one time, every male sings the same tune. But like jazz musicians, they'll riff off the classics, making small tweaks as they go. Their ever-changing music provides some of the best evidence yet that animals other than humans can pass on behaviours to each other, that they have their own culture. For the longest time, scientists didn't believe that animals had cultural traditions at all, and any examples of these were hotly contested. But opinion has started to shift. One big moment came in the 90s when primatologist Andrew Whiten and colleagues at the University of St Andrews showed that chimpanzees from different parts of Africa would do the same kinds of things but in very different ways. Some used sticks to extract honey from beehives while others would use leaves to do the same thing. Some used sticks as hunting spears, while others used them to fish for ants. Some would call for attention by drumming on branches, but others would rip leaves between their teeth to do the same thing. In other words, Whiten argued that they had culture. There are now many examples of similar traditions in other animals. Some orangutans blow raspberries at each other before they go to bed. Bottlenose dolphins in Australia's Shark Bay have taken to wearing sponges on their beaks while they forage for food, a behaviour that passes down from mothers to offspring. Some capuchin monkeys in Costa Rica have developed a really weird tradition of poking each other in the eyes. And then there are the humpbacks. Humpback whales have been singing for millions of years, but humans only discovered their tunes in the 60s, when scientist Katie Payne and her then-husband Roger went to Bermuda and met a Navy engineer who had been inadvertently recording the whales. And when the Paynes heard these recordings, they found them so beautiful and so powerful that they started crying. And then they got to work. They show that these calls have a structure to them, much like human songs. The songs are hierarchical. Single sounds or units are combined into phrases, which are then repeated to form themes, which are then delivered in a specific order. Oftentimes, the whales will play around with the phrases and the themes, tweaking them ever so slightly. But sometimes, they will make much larger changes, even adopting a completely new song. Michael Node and Ellen Garland from the University of Queensland found that in the mid-1990s, humpbacks from the eastern coast of Australia were singing a tune that they called the Pink Song. But then, in 1995, a small group of humpbacks swam across from the west, bringing with them a foreign tune, the Black Song. The Black Song became a viral sensation, completely ousting the Pink Song within three years. It dominated the humpback charts for another couple of years before the whales remixed it into the Grey Song, which was itself eventually ousted by a different tune. The songs really are like human fashion trends. There is innovation, but it is stifled by this incredible tendency to conform. But every now and then, a new trend starts and catches. And before you know it, everyone is doing the same new thing. There is still a lot of debate about whether animals have their own cultures. But increasingly, scientists are debating not just whether such cultures exist, but how they develop, how they spread, and how they differ from ours. Maybe eventually, even the most die-hard skeptics will take inspiration from the humpbacks and change their tune. Woo!